How do you like your new role, just having a few weeks now to kind of I uh, love it. It's great. Uh, the guys, the, you know, my room's a great room. The guys are working hard. It's cool to, uh, to to coach tight ends just because they do everything. You get a little bit of the run game, get a little bit of pass protection, get route running. Uh, you know, we've got a bunch of smart kids in there that work hard. So it's been a pleasure this, thus far. I know you've done, you've done this before, but how do you, in, in this specific situation, especially when you've got young quarterbacks, how do you balance – your work with the tight ends and, and still wanting to see as much as you can of the whole offense. Yeah, it, it's really easy. I mean, we got a great staff. Uh, bringing Glenn on board, we've known each other for 20 years. We think the same. We have the same expectations of quarterback play. So, you know, it's it's easy for me to go in and out of the tight end room to the quarterback room to make sure that we're maintaining a relationship because that's crucial because I'm going to have to communicate to those guys, you know, throughout the game. Uh, it's been a, a, a very easy transition to this point. Zach Coach Rule um, said that Having you coach the tight ends will help them be more involved on the field. Just from your point of view, how, how is that going to happen? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I think that uh, it, it'll be good for him to have the play caller in the room. I think the way that I'll teach will probably uh, expand their brains a little bit. You know, because I'm not just teaching the tight end; I'm teaching the tight end a lot of times like the quarterback. Uh, and so, I think that'll help them. Uh, but it won't be like magically because I'm, I'm going to try to get them the ball because I'm coaching them now. I think just naturally year two of the offense, uh, I think our quarterback play is going to improve. I think that if the quarterback play improving, then the pass game is going to improve. So everybody gets more touches. So I think it's just layer after layer of development as coaches, players, and program. Where do you think Fedoni can go after you know having one year where he had a fully healthy season and now building off of that? Uh, you know, I think he's going. He's he's set mentally and physically to have a, a you know a really good year. I don't want to sit here and jinx him and say a breakout year, but we have a lot of high expectations for him. Uh, you know, having the pleasure of watching him practice the first five times. I mean, he's moving around really, really, really well. He has a great understanding of our offense. Uh, he's getting a lot of balls thrown at him. He's catching the ball well. He's running after the catch. So, you know, I'm ready for him to take that next step, and I think he's ready to take the next step. Oh, it's it's easy. I mean, like he'll tell you, like I'm a little bit of the crazy one off the wall when he's the calm one. You know, I'm the yin, he's the yang. Uh, so it, it was easy. It's like I mean, we've been together and coached together now for I think five or six years and known him forever. So it's it's been really easy. Been fun. Where should this offense get better? Uh, we're going to throw the ball. We have to be able to throw the ball. Uh, I think we're always going to find a way to run the ball. But as you saw last year, I mean, you can run the balls, you know, well, but there's going to come times when you have to win a game, you have to throw the ball. So uh, we've really been focusing on just our passing game and our pass protection and our route running and just all all the concepts of throwing the football. For incoming freshmen, how far ahead are guys like Dylan and Daniel just with their footwork, their, their knowledge of the game of football, just the training they've had before they got here? Uh, you talk about just being mid-year guys yeah, uh, and how far along they are. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. We were watching them uh, yesterday or two days ago, practice four, completing a bunch of uh, completing a bunch of balls, and you sit there and you're like, you know, you forget sometimes that that's that's Dylan and Danny's fourth practice in college going against these guys, and they're still able to have the poise and the footwork and the timing in their brains and the knowledge of the system already to get completions because it's hard to do, especially against our defense moving around like they do. So I think that they're uh, they're ahead of schedule. And uh, you know the good thing about those guys is they they're they're competitors and they work their butts off you know on the field and off the field to make sure when they do get on the field they understand what's going on and where everybody's going to be. So you look at our wide receivers. How have some of those you know new additions, you know, Banks, Nair, and some of the freshmen kind of fit in and, and help that? Yeah, it's a great room, and uh, you know. Kind of like we were talking about coaching the tight ends, like quarterbacks, Garrett coaches those guys. Like they're, you know, they, they don't just learn routes; they learn the system and they learn the why we're calling plays. So I think you know that room's got to take a step, and they've already taken a step this spring. I think just the depth we added uh, with our two older guys that we brought in, and then the freshman, mid-year freshman coming in, and then D. Bell being able to be activated this year. I think you know we've got good depth, uh, got a lot of good speed, a lot of guys that can make plays, and they've shown that thus far. So it's good to see. What stood out about the running back room and, and how that competition's going? Uh, we don't have the full allotment out there yet, but I think that you know they all just like I'll tell you every year they all have their different traits. You know, some guys catch the ball, some guys run the ball, some guys run through you, some guys run around you. So 
Uh, again, we've been really you know focusing on throwing the football a little bit more this spring uh, thus far, and then the first two helmets being in, in helm or just first two practices being in helmets, we haven't got a lot of full contact play. So I think we'll be able to tell a lot about the running backs after we get our first live scrimmage and we see who can break a tackle and who can make a guy miss. Who, who among the allotment do you have available right now? Uh, we have Dante, we have Emmett, uh, we, have, we have RJ, we have, I hate when I have to name names, I'll forget people, but you know, we're just holding a couple out just for just for precautionary reasons, but nobody's out just you know due to two injury where they couldn't play, it was just being cautious. What do you, what do you think of Dante's game so far? I mean, he's, a, he's a physical runner, like very, very, very physical runner downhill, like even in thud, he tries to run through your face. Uh, you know, so he's shown that the last practice had a couple good runs just from a physicality standpoint. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned Demetrius. Good, good hearing about him. Um, what do you what do you have to do to get him involved, and, and what can he do if he's involved? Uh, I mean, he's he's shown it out there already. Just he can catch the ball, and then what he does after he catches it is is he's got a special trait. Uh, he's a very smart kid. He works really hard. Uh, he knows his he knows his posi- he knows multiple positions, so he can go and and get a lot of snaps that way. But I think he just has to keep playing football, stay healthy, and keep playing, and he'll be fine. Saturday? Uh, that's a coach rule question. I don't know. I just go day by day, but what I'm sure we'll get a little action on Saturday. Yeah, if you get a little action, what in your role? What are you looking for early in spring? Uh, taking care of the football, number one, first priority. Uh, Two, you know, don't beat ourselves before the ball is snapped with procedure penalties. Being able to line up correctly, play as hard as we possibly can, know and do your job, and play with great effort. Where do you, where do you think you guys were, you know, not half bad throwing the ball last year? Like, was there a component of the past game that you were like, well, I mean, it's not as bad as it could have been and it was decent? Uh, I think that we, I think we threw the deep ball at times well. Uh, you know, off our play action stuff, we had a couple of those deep shots middle of the end of the year. Uh, but just, you know, to- the total aspect of, of throwing the ball just from quick game to down the field shots to move in the pocket, you know, that's something that we got to improve on all facets of the game. I'm curious about the, the quick game. You, you guys didn't do a, a ton of it last year. How, how much more have you worked on that and how effective can it be for an offense if they can get that throw out there and just get I get, It can be really effective. You know, we talk about just getting the ball in play, like just throw it, catch it, get the ball in play and get the, you know, get the ball moving and not just having to rely on the run game all the time and get it to those guys in space and see if they can make a, make a guy miss and create an explosive. Yeah, huge. I think that they all have their different, you know, types. Like you have inline blockers, guys that play off the ball, that kind of play that fullback type tight end role, and then you got guys like you know Thomas that can do a little bit of everything. But you know, uh, Nate and Luke are, are we're going to rely on them very, you know, a lot to do a lot of different things. You know, playing in twelve personnel, thirteen personnel at times. They got to know receiver positions and. Those guys have played a lot of football and been, you know, productive when called upon. Anything else for staff? All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks.